and Elise. Thank you for all the singing for blessing us today in song. Turn, if you will, to the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and also Ephesians, chapter 6. Exodus 20, Ephesians 6. I want to share with you today on the subject, the Christian home. Exodus 20, verse 12. This is the fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And then in Ephesians 6, And verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for well, this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou, may live, that thou mayest live long on the earth. The Ten Commandments are divided into two divisions. The first four commandments deal with our relationship to God, and the last six deal with our relationship to our fellow man. In Mark 13, there was a scribe who asked Jesus a question, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And if we keep this first commandment, we will automatically be keeping the first four commandments in Exodus 20. Then in Mark 13, Jesus said, the second commandment is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And this second commandment given by Jesus covers the last six of the commandments in Exodus 20. Jesus quoted this fifth commandment on various occasions. When the rich young ruler came to Jesus, this was one of the commandments that Jesus quoted to him or referred to. And as Jesus taught the scribes and the Pharisees in Mark 7, he taught them from this fifth commandment. The apostle Paul taught this fifth commandment in Ephesians 6. And Jesus practiced this fifth commandment in his own life. Luke 2 says that Jesus went down to Nazareth and he was subject to to his parents. Someone has said that there is no more serious damage done to our society than the failure in keeping this fifth commandment. Today let's think together on the Christian home. First of all, the model home. You've heard the saying as the home goes, so goes the nation. And I would say, so goes the church. So goes society. And that is a true statement. The greatest failure in America today is the breakdown in the family and the home. There are so many fractured and dysfunctional families. And the nuclear family has become a rare thing. That is where parents and their children live in one household. And so this has contributed to the juvenile problems in our world today. But in the home, each family member has a responsibility. And when one family member fails to fill their role, then it 
leads to a breakdown in the family and the home. I want us to note the order of the Christian home. The first order is a husband who loves his wife. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives. And then it talks about how he should love his wife. Verse 25 says, As Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And so that is sacrificial, self-giving love. And then, verse 28, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. The husband will nourish and cherish his own body, and he is to nourish and cherish his wife, just as the Lord cares for the church, and just as the husband cares for himself, even so he cares for his wife. And this leaves... Uh, leaves no room for neglect or abuse. But rather, the husband will show tender, loving care to his wife. And then the second order is a wife who is submissive to her husband. And I know that word submit just automatically strikes a negative note uh, with many wives. Uh, many wives think that I'm supposed to be a slave. And many husbands have totally misunderstood and misused that term submit. Husbands sometimes think their wife is a slave. But Ephesians 5 and 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In Ephesians 5 and 6, we have the order of the home. Wives, submit to the husband. Husband, submit to Christ. Children, submit to the parents. Servants, submit to their masters. And we might say that that is the employee, submit to the employer. And so every Christian is to be submissive. And folks, apart from this order, there will be chaos in the home. Someone said, there are two reasons for the wife to submit to her husband. One is the lordship of Christ, and the other is the headship of the man in Christ. You see, the wife is subject to her husband, who is subject to Christ, and so both are under the lordship of Jesus Christ, and this makes for harmony in the home. Men... Headship is not dictatorship. Someone said it like this, each for the other and both for the Lord. And so submit is a loving word. We respond to each other as unto the Lord. And so if we want our children and our grandchildren to grow up to be mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically healthy, then they need to be exposed to a healthy environment in the home. In the Christian home, there should be love for God, love for each other, respect for each other, compassion, understanding, consideration, forgiveness, patience, and this is the healthy environment necessary for Christian development. Then the next order in the home is children who are subject to their parents. Obedience and honor and respect start in the home. Our scripture gives two admonitions to children. One is to obey your parents. Ephesians 6 and 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for well, this is right. Colossians 3.20, children, obey your parents in all things, for well, this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. The children learn authority in the home. 
If there is no authority, no respect in the home, there will be none in society, none in, in the school. And so children are to respect their parents and to obey the parents. It is right to obey because this is God's command. The parents brought you into this world. The parents are wiser than the children, supposed to be. The parents know what is best and what is safe and what is good. And so it is right to obey. I know that the modern version of this scripture today is parents obey your children and this will make them happy and bring peace in the home. But that philosophy ultimately leads to destruction and disaster in the home, in the school, in society. Someone is going to say, how long must I obey my parents? Well, I heard a preacher answer this question one time, and I certainly agree. He said that you obey your parents as long as you live under their roof, and they buy the groceries, and they pay the mortgage. Our scripture says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You obey your parents in the Lord. If the parent tells you to do something that is contrary to the word of God and the teaching of the scripture, then you are not under obligation to obey the parent. Otherwise, you are to obey. And then children are to honor their parents. Honor thy father and thy mother. Exodus 20 and 12. Ephesians 6 says the same thing. Now there comes a time when you no longer are obligated to obey the parents when you get out on your own. But we honor them as long as they live and we honor their memory after they're gone. And folks, I still respect and honor my parents. How we do. Because of we were brought up in a Christian home. They taught us about God. And I've said to you, the, the farthest thing that I remember almost in my young years is come nighttime, our daddy would say, okay, children, get quiet. And he would reach up on the mantel and get the family Bible down and he would read and then get out on his knees and he'd pray. Amen. And so we honor their memory. To honor is to show respect and love. To care for them. To value them. To consider them as precious. Our parents cared for us and provided for us and protected us while we were young. And so when our parents get older, let's not neglect them. When we were young, our parents had a responsibility to us. And when they get older, we have a responsibility to them. To neglect our parents is to disobey God's word. Now, Many dishonor their parents by neglect. In the scriptures, the Jews were looking for loopholes to get out from under the responsibility of caring for their parents. And they devised a plan, and Mark 7 talks about this. These Jews would dedicate their possessions to the church and they call that Corbin. But yet they used their monies and their goods for their own benefits as long as they lived. And then when they died, whatever was left went to the temple or the synagogue. And so the Jews claimed no responsibility uh, for their parents. And Jesus condemned this tradition. Obedience to parents, honor to parents is God's command. Now, 
Let me say this. If a young man or young lady is dating a boy or a girl who has no respect for their parents, this is a red flag. This is rebellion. This is disrespect. This is defiance. And someone will say, well, I'm not marrying the parent, but yes, you are to an extent. Now, I know that there are all kinds of circumstances in different situations, but our Christian faith should be our guide. Love God first and foremost. Obey his word. Love one another. Submit to one another. Obey where obedience is required. Otherwise, there will be nothing but chaos and anarchy. And so we note the model home. But note also the blessed home. Psalm 37 and verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Even so, the arrangement of the blessed home is ordered by the Lord. When a home is arranged according to, to God's word, it is a healthy, peaceful home. A home where there is joy and laughter and sharing and conversation and communication. There is mental and emotional health. There is spiritual growth and maturity. And this is the kind of home that gives to the kingdom of God and to the church preachers and missionaries and deacons and teachers and faithful lay members. Christians who discover their gifts and their talents and who use them <coughs> for the glory of God. This is the kind of home that God places his approval upon and his blessings and his power. And folks, we need to work at making this our kind of home. And there are all kinds of challenges uh, that we encounter. But we all, and, and I know many of us are senior adults here today, uh, but we still have our family relationships. Uh, most of us, our children are married and gone, but we have grandchildren. We have uh, many who are being influenced by our life. But whatever your family status is, let's be Christian. Let's set a Christian example. And those who are looking up to us, who are being influenced by our life, let's lead them right. Let's teach them about God. But then the Christian home is endowed with God's promises. Ephesians 6 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that it may be well with thee. A life lived according to God's commands has quality. It is a blessed life. An abundant life. Not just survival. But this is the overflowing life. A life with joy unspeakable. Peace that passes understanding. A fruitful life. A life that touches and encourages and lifts and blesses others. And folks, in the home, there should be peace and contentment. In the homes where we can be ourselves, of course, let's be ourselves always. But someone has said, in the home, you can let down your hair, can't you? <laughs> and, and families need to be understanding of one another and considerate of each other. And it should be a place where, where there's love and unity and oneness and cooperation and let's be 
the family of God in our homes, and then it'll translate into the church. It is the, the abundant life. The abundant life is like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. We can choose to live a barren life or a blessed life. A life lived according to God's word has quality. But then a life lived according to God's word has quantity. Exodus 20 and 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Ephesians 6 and 2. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, does this mean that if a person dies young, then that they were disobedient to their parent? And the answer is no. But to live by God's word as, as quality and quantity to one's life. The person who lives right avoids a multitude of things that can shorten one's life and destroy the quality of life. And yes, you can shorten your days or lengthen your days. And I think that's taught in the scriptures. But we look at a multitude of people today who go to a premature grave because of crime, drugs, alcohol, permissive lifestyles. And look at the multitudes of people who limit the quality of life by hatred, jealousy, and grudges, and ill will, and selfishness, and greed. And many homes, and many individuals' lives are just boring and, and there's no joy and no real peace because of these kind of things that uh, they allow to dominate their life. God's Word says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. In Matthew chapter 5, nine times Jesus promised and pronounced blessings upon those who live by God's word. Well, the model home, the model family, the model Christian has God's approval, God's blessings, and God's promise. Each of us owes honor to God first and honor to our parents. Children and each of us honor thy father and thy mother your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's show honor and respect to every person, to each other. Every person is valuable. Every person has worth. And yes, every person makes mistakes. But we can move beyond those mistakes. And we can have quality in our life and quantity. Let's just live for God and enjoy his blessings on our life, on our home, on our church. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for Christian homes, Christian families. Home where your name is not strange and where it's 
not awkward to talk about you, about your word, about the church, about your goodness and love and grace. Lord, may we as parents, as grandparents, talk about your love and goodness when we're around our families, our grandchildren. May we just uh, let them know that you are first and foremost in our lives, that you are the center of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for Christian parents and grandparents and Christian sons and daughters. And thank you for the makeup of a family as a whole. And whatever our family status may be, Lord, that we'll make it good and make it a Christian home for your honor. Thank you for your love and grace.